If your favorite appliance has stopped working, first thing to do is unplug it from the wall, of course, to make it safe, then visually inspect it. Make sure there's no obvious signs of damage in water, and then try it in another socket that you know to be working. If it's still not working, it could be the fuse, and I'm gonna show you how to change that properly. This type of plug is a molded fuse carrier. So what this means you need to do is get a small flathead screwdriver, remove the fuse carrier like this. Sometimes it's capped in a clip and sometimes a loop. Take the fuse out uh, and then you're just gonna pop a new fuse back in. So have yourself a supply of new fuses. Now there is a hidden danger here, which I'll tell you about later in the video. Uh, but for now, you're just gonna, I'm gonna say you're gonna use the appropriate size fuse. We'll talk about that later on pop it back in. If it has the loop type, put it through the loop first and you're done. Okay, with this second type of plug, you're actually gonna need to unscrew it. So unscrew just the top screw in the middle below the longest pin, which is called the earth pin. Then flip the plug round the other way and grab hold of the pin that is under the fuse with your fingers. That's gonna stop it moving. And then you lever the fuse out like so. And when you take the other end of the fuse out, just be a little bit careful you don't pull that brown wire out. Replace the fuse with an appropriate rating fuse uh, for now, we're just going to use the same as the one that came out. Later in the video, I'll explain this in more detail. Then pop the top of the plug back on, uh, flip it over, and put the screw that you took out back in. So now that I've shown you pretty quickly how to change the fuse, let's talk about it in a bit more detail. The first hidden danger is that the reason the fuse blew is because the appliance got wet or maybe a pet chewed or a rodent chewed through the cable. So the first thing you must do is to take it out of the wall socket and check the appliance for moisture and damage and check the cable carefully for moisture and damage. No good replacing the fuse to then go and get electrocuted off the flex. But if it all looks all right, you're perfectly safe to move on to the next step and avoid the second danger, which is the wrong fuse rating. Now, picking the right replacement fuse could get a little bit complicated, but let's keep it really simple. If your appliance generates heat, like a hairdryer or a fryer or something like that, then go for 13 amps. If your appliance just doesn't generate heat, then typically a five amp fuse will be fine. Now you can do a little bit better than this. You can just look on the appliance itself, or if it came with a pre-installed plug, uh, look on the plug itself, it might tell you what you need. In the UK, our common sizes are three amps, five amps, sometimes 10 amps and 13. Okay, but the big thing is that you know whether you're using a 13 or a five, that's the big distinction to weight. The more complicated way to do this is to take the power of the appliance as written on its plate and divide by 230. So if it's 2,300 watts, you divide by 230, that's 10 amps. You need to go bigger than that, so that would be a 13 amp fuse. But you don't normally need to go to that extent. If it generates heat, you probably need a 13 amp. If it doesn't, you probably need a five amp. It would be a good, simple rule of thumb. But if it's written on the appliance, go with that. Now the danger, by the way, of putting a fuse in that's too big is that the appliance could overheat, the flexes in it, the cables in it could overheat, or something internally could overheat before the fuse blows. The purpose of a fuse is it's a weak link in the system that will fail before anything else that's weaker in the system manages to get too hot and cause a problem. So let's say you've put the fuse back in, plugged the thing into the wall, and it still doesn't work, even though you know the socket works, because other things work in that socket. This is where you really ought to invest in a continuity checker. This thing is a voltage indicator and continuity checker as used by professional electricians and this is a very useful tool to have around the house if you're going to do any electrics anyway. They're about 30 quid and there's a link in the description. You touch the two ends of the probe and it beeps like this. This tells you that there is a circuit between the two ends of the probe as you'd expect. Now if you touch the two ends of these on a fuse uh, like this and it beeps that tells you that fuse is okay. Right, so you want to do that before you put a fuse in something to make sure that the fuse is okay, even if it's brand new. And then uh, if you put it in and the appliance still doesn't work, you're going to need to take the fuse back out and retest it. If you find it was okay before, as in it beeps, and it's not okay after, as in it doesn't, then the thing has blown the fuse again. If you've visually inspected it and you can't see anything wrong, there's not much else you can do at this stage unless you're going to get into appliance testing, in which case subscribe to the channel and I'll teach you more advanced techniques like that later on.